Okay. Hi. Happy Cinco de Mayo. It's Cinco de Mayo. It's the 5th of May. But it also happens to be my New York birthday. Um, for anyone who is watching who doesn't know what a New York birthday is, uh, it's something that pretty much everybody celebrates. Whenever you move to the city, that's your first day there. And then the following year is your first birth, your first New York birthday or New York anniversary. Um, as of today, I have lived here two years exactly. So I figured what a better day than to sit down and do a recording and, uh, I don't know, maybe try to get back into it. It has been uh, a really challenging season for me um, on a lot of fronts and uh, doesn't feel like a lot of reprieve, but also I'm surrounded by really wonderful people who love me and who I love. So I just find myself kind of every day, despite things not really feeling the way that I want them to feel or go the way I want them to go, um, grateful and, um, and really working on kind of maintaining that posture of gratitude, um, and being, uh, very just accepting of what's around me, but also striving for change. Um, and, the dog's passing, you know, it's just, that's been easily the hardest thing that I've been trying to go through. It's been a lot of depression, a lot of sadness, a lot of guilt. Um, some of these things unfounded. Some of these things may be necessary to go through. Um, overall, I find myself... I don't know, wanting things to be different and wanting to be in a different place mentally, emotionally. Um, and that's not just how life works often. We normally have to be in these things and feel them and kind of let it be difficult. <laughs> there's no, there's really no two ways about it. Um, and when you're going through something that's like a depressive or an anxious episode or a period of time, it can be very easy to kind of just go inward and not really be out and about and being with other people and letting other people kind of pour into you. Um, and I haven't necessarily found that that's the case for me, but um, but there are moments I have when it's harder than others. Um, so, yeah. Gratitude is becoming super important for me just as I realize I'm not where I want to be. Not like New York. I love New York. But just mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all those things. I'm not where I want to be right now. And, um, you know, the grief has played a really big part in that. Um, I am a changed person because of the grieving process. And that's something that I don't know that I could have predicted. I, I've, I always felt like I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't fully human <laughs> because I hadn't experienced grief. Um, but now that I have and I've just been having to kind of go through it and sit with it, um, it's really, really changed so much of how I think about the world. You know, it used to be that when my dogs were getting old and sick that I would start to kind of think, okay, I need to mentally prepare for what's going to come, what's going to happen. And um, there is no preparing for it. You can try to prepare, but there is no, you don't know what's on the other side. Um, and I thought for sure, I was like, okay, when they pass, I'll probably grieve for like a couple of weeks and it'll be really hard, even though I knew I couldn't imagine a life without them. But I would still, to myself, think, okay, it'll be a shorter period of time, two weeks, a month, I don't know. And then I will magically enter this new life in this new world where I'm just a free person. And I don't have to go home at a certain time, or I, don't have, I can stay out when I want. 
but the loneliness and the emptiness that I felt once the dogs passed um, was just so intense that I don't, I really wasn't thinking about the freedom. I haven't even thought about it. There have been a couple of moments where I've been able to say yes to things and then I would just go and do them and be like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's good. I didn't have to like feed the dogs tonight. But for the most part, I haven't thought about that at all. I've just thought about like what a joy it was to have them and what it was to, you know, just be able to love them and, 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 you know, be their person. And, <laughs> um, so yeah, still going through it, but really every day just trying to wake up and find, um, purpose and mission and really examine my life and, and, um, try and look at the world from a standpoint of positivity, despite the fact that <laughs> when you look around, there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of uh, that happening right now. It's a lot of awful in the world happening and a lot of terrible things happening and, and people hurting and dying and, and people starving. And, um, you know, I have to kind of always bring myself back to a posture of a perspective and say, I am alive and healthy and breathing and I am in, I have a roof over my head and I have a bed and I have a great roommate and friend and I have friends that surround me and I have good family. I'm in a lovely city and I'm so grateful for all these things and I don't take advantage of that for a second. Um, and so when I start to picture the world in that way, um, then I'm, you know, I find myself, uh, you know, like, okay, you know what? Maybe things aren't so bad, just... Give it a day at a time and keep doing your best and keep working through it. Uh, so, yeah, um, you know, no real crazy updates necessarily. Um, I've been running a lot. I've been trying to take care of my health. Um, I've modified my diet a bit. I'm going to talk about that in, in later later videos. Um, and uh, one kind of point of vulnerability that I don't love having to share, but my anxiety has been really really bad the last like two or three weeks and um for anyone who has anxiety uh or specifically ocd depending on the type of ocd that you have um when it comes <laughs> and you can't control it it's a very unnerving process uh or, or or um effect that you know it can have and um you know i i really don't want to get into it tonight but i'm happy to share it another time but um yeah, some of my health OCD stuff kind of started up and it just got me like really overthinking a lot of things. And um, for anyone who hasn't experienced anxiety, anxiety has a way of manifesting itself in different ways and different seasons at different times. So anxiety may cause someone a headache or it may cause their stomach to turn or it may give them, you know, weird type of bodily pain that they're not used to and is very strange and it can make you think this is new this is weird something is off um and for me in the last two to four two to three weeks my anxiety i'm pretty sure this is all it is because the last two or three days has been getting a little bit better but my anxiety when i feel it sort of well up and i feel like i'm working too hard um physically like i've, I've just gone too far and i need to rest um, I get my mouth kind of dries up and it's usually fine during the day. And then when I go to bed, I I've been waking up in the middle of the night and like, you know, like a pasty mouth and it's just gross and it sucks. Um, but then I wake up, I hydrate and I move throughout my day and I feel totally fine. So, but, but generally speaking, anxiety does have a way of kind of creeping its way into your sleep habits and, um, and disrupting those. And so, um, I found that, uh, you know, as long as I'm staying exercised and keeping my diet in check and fluids high, then I'm pretty good. But, um, yeah, I've been kind of going through it and it is not fun. Um, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, depression or anxiety. It's really, really tough, especially when you're in the thick of it. Now, that being said, having gone through it and having going through been going through it for a period of time I feel very well equipped now to 
share my experience with people who are going through the same thing and don't know what it is. So I'm actually like kind of grateful for it. Like anxiety can be a really good friend if you can pause long enough to be able to like observe it and, um, you know, and, and sort of troubleshoot what's going on in your head in a productive way and not an overthinking, over analytical data driven way. Um, so anyways, that's a little summary, uh, some highlights of the life in the last couple of months. Um, last night I went to an amazing musical on Broadway, Illinois, Sufjan Stevens. Um, it was a, a rendition of, of his Illinois album from 2005 and it was just incredible. A friend of mine, Benjamin, who's a filmmaker in the city, had said, you know, he called me up and I was in the middle of a movie. It was, the movie was about to start and I'm sitting there like waiting for my food and he uh, calls me. He's like, dude, I got tickets to Illinois. And I was like, oh, I just sat down at the theater. Da, 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 da. And, uh, and instead I was like, you know what? I'll watch this movie another time. So I ate my food. I watched 30 minutes of the movie. I got out of the theater and, um, I uh, went to the show on Broadway, and it was just incredible, and it made my whole night. Um, so, yeah, that's been that's been good. But um, other musings, uh, I'm thinking about deleting dating apps. That's a that's an important one. Um, I was gonna just do it today, but like, I don't know. I don't have the. I really don't have the energy to like go through it. And there are a couple people that I'm like interested in, but you know. That's just how it goes. That's that's how they lure you in and keep you. But I'm I'm really finding myself pretty like done with them overall. Um, and the main driving factor of that, I was on a walk the other day and uh, I um, was uh, I had this thought. I was like, I want to be closer to the natural world. I want to be around the world as it exists in real life and whatever I can do to be less on my phone and less engaged with a device or people through a device, the better. And the first and the most obvious thing that came up was, was dating apps. So, um, yeah, thinking about getting off of that. Um, what else? <clears throat> the only other thing is that I finished a book. This is my subway book. It's um, Sidney Lumet. He's a director. Um, hopefully that is in the middle. Uh, but it's called Making Movies. And I think I talked about it before. But anyways, whenever I'm on the subway, I just read 10, 15, 20 pages. And it's amazing. So that book has been really instrumental. And it's so nice to finish a book. I love finishing books. It doesn't happen enough. Um, and I just started another one on filmmaking, which I'm, I'm really excited about. So... Um, let's see what else. Last and final highlight. Um, I finally decided to, uh, kind of take the first step toward doing something in film. Uh, since I moved here, I haven't really done much, but, um, I got on with some background casting and, uh, tomorrow I go to, uh, my first background thing. So that'll be fun. I'm kind of just like going to, uh, um, enjoy it and, see what being on a massive set is like um i can't really talk about the film but it is a timothy chalamet film so pretty excited about that i don't know i assume he's going to be there but um yeah so that's it today is my my new york birthday my second new york birthday um going on year three and i wanted to i actually didn't want to do the video in this way i wanted to do it in a totally different way but I was like, if I don't fucking sit down and do this, then I'm not going to do it. And then I'm going to look back and be like, oh, what was uh, end of year two like? <laughs> I'm not going to know. Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully this is a little bit of enthusiasm and, and energizing um, for me. Energizement? Ener energy? You know, whatever. Um, hopefully it's some new uh, reinvigorated excitement for doing videos. I've been recording a ton of footage on my iPhone um, that I'm super eager and excited to use. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get more into that in the coming coming days and week weeks. So, 
All right, happy birthday to me, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, I am excited about the future. I'm optimistic. And I just hope for peace in the world and peace in all of our hearts and peace in your heart and um, that you would find excitement and enthusiasm and energy in whatever you're doing. So, okay, that's it. I have to go to bed because I have to be up at four in the morning. I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.